Hey everybody, and welcome back to a new video. Do you have a problem with photos that aren't sharp, but you don't know why? And because you don't know the problem, you don't know how to fix it. In this video, I'll teach you how to diagnose the top five sources of sharpness problems and give you strategies and practical tips to tackle them. If you stay for my bonus tip, I'll show you how to get sharp photos from even entry-level gear. My name is Simon Dantremont, and I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for wildlife and nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. Okay, so your photo isn't sharp, but you just don't know why. The potential reasons for your photo not being sharp are the subject moved, the camera moved, you missed focus, the depth of field is too thin, and your image was noisy with poor image quality. Let's get started. One of the most common reasons that your photos aren't sharp is that the subject moved while the shutter was open. The issue here being that if there is subject movement while the shutter is open, it will streak across the center pixels rather than staying one place, and the camera will record the streaking movement, not freeze the subject, in a moment in time. Now done intentionally, you can use this effect to simulate movement in your shot, like for moving water, a moving car, or rotating airplane propellers, but otherwise, it shows up as blur on your subject. So how can we tell this type of lack of sharpness from others? If your subject is blurry, but the rest of the photo at the same plane of focus, that is within the depth of field, is sharp, then it's movement of your subject that's the problem. You have two potential solutions. One, you need to increase your shutter speed so that the time the subject can move in the frame is lessened. One one hundredth of a second for static targets, one five hundredth for slow moving targets, one one thousandth for sports or fast targets, and one two thousandth of a second for flying birds. The second solution is that if your subject is moving, improved panning technique will yield sharper images. That's because if you pan and move along with your subject, its apparent movement across your field of view is much slower, making the movement across the sensor less. So if you want to take a sharp photo of a moving car, don't aim at one spot and let the car pass across the frame, but follow the movement as you hit the shutter. Now the second most common reason for images that aren't sharp is not that your subject moved, but your camera moved. So your camera is moving, which causes the apparent movement of the scene on your sensor. The tell for this one is usually blurriness across the whole scene. While when the subject moves, the subject is blurry, but the rest is sharp, when the camera moves, there's usually nothing sharp in the photo. You may even see streaks in your scene, and they should all be in the same direction. I have three potential solutions for this. One, like in subject movement, camera movement can be managed with shorter shutter speeds. Like before, faster shutter speeds will give less time for the camera to move while the shutter is open. The trick here is to have the minimum shutter speed needed to freeze the movement of your camera. And my advice here is to shoot a shutter speed that is one over the focal length of your lens. Why this relationship to focal length? That's because the more zoomed up your scene or subject is, the faster they move around in the field of view. So longer lenses need higher shutter speeds to prohibit camera movement. So one over the focal length of your lens would be 1 50th of a second shutter speed for a 50 millimeter lens and 1 400th of a second for a 400 millimeter lens. What will work for you best will depend on the camera and lens combination that you're using and if they have stabilization. If they do, you can cheat on these suggestions and get away with it. I would advise not going lower than 1 50th of a second, even on wide lenses like 20 millimeter lenses, just because getting sharp photos at extremely low shutter speeds is very difficult. Another way to stop camera movement is just to use good hand holding technique. Support the lens and camera firmly, tuck your elbows into your body, squeeze the trigger gently, don't stab, and add some pressure from your eyebrow to the back eye cup. These will all stabilize the camera and reduce vibration caused by the actuation of your shutter. At really low shutter speeds, like one tenth of a second, half a second, or a few seconds, handheld isn't stable enough for sharp photos, even with good technique. You may need these long shutter speeds in low light conditions to appropriately expose your scene. This is the time to break out the tripod. That way, as long as your subject isn't moving, you can take as long as an exposure as you'd like. Use a shutter release or the two second timer on your camera so you don't shake the camera on these long exposures while you're pressing the shutter button. 
The next common scenario that will leave you with photos that aren't sharp is having totally missed the focus. On very fast or long focal length lenses, this is easily diagnosed as the subject will be out of focus, but the background or foreground will be in focus. This means that your camera isn't focused on the right part of the image. To get around this, here are a few tips. One, if your subject is one that moves, make sure you have your camera set to autofocus continuous. That's AFC on many cameras and AI servo on a Canon. This makes your focus follow movement rather than being frozen at one spot. Two, if your subject isn't moving, check to see if your photo is in focus before or after taking the photo. You can do this by checking on the back LCD and zooming in on the photo. Most cameras have a button or dial to zoom in on the photo. It sometimes looks like a little magnifying glass. Look around the scene to see which parts are in focus, if any. If the wrong part of the photo is in focus, try moving your focus point around, which you may be able to do using a little joystick on the back of the camera, and make sure you put your focus points on the part of the image you want to be in focus. By the way, if you sign up for my email list, I'll offer you my free guide on shooting in backlit situations. Link in the comments below. The next most common cause of photos that aren't sharp are that the depth of field is too thin. That's because photos usually have a slice of the photo in focus with things before and after that slice out of focus. If you move the camera or your subject moves, the focus point can be outside the critical areas where you needed it to be. This can be obvious or sometimes subtle, like in this photo of mine of a wood duck. This photo is focused on the eye like I wanted, but this one is focused in front of the eye as the depth of field is razor thin. The solution is to make the depth of field deeper. And the easiest way to do this is to have a smaller aperture, making more of the photo in focus. A smaller aperture would have a larger F number. Here's an example of a thin depth of field at F2. Notice that any movement of the subject or the camera moves the part of the photo that I want in focus outside the depth of field. But if I make the depth of field deeper at F11, I have more leeway for the subject or the camera to move and still have the subject in focus. So an example here would be trying to photograph a group of people with some in front and some standing in the back. With a depth of field that's too thin, you can't get all of the people in the photo in focus at once at a, let's say f2.8. Make that aperture f8 and you'll deepen the depth of field, improving the odds that everyone will be in focus. The next situation that can lead to photos that are disappointing on sharpness is poor image quality due to noise. Digital noise reduces the contrast, details, and image quality of your photo and generally makes it look soft. Adding too much noise reduction and trying to fix it later may even make it worse if you don't know what you're doing, robbing it of more detail as you try to reduce the noise. The solution here is to get more light onto your sensor, as the cause of noise is low light, what we call a poor signal to noise ratio. This will often be when your ISO is very high, as images with poor amounts of light need high ISOs to be the right brightness. But ISO isn't a source of light. There are only three ways to get more light onto your sensor. One, use longer shutter speeds to gather more photons between the shutter opening and closing. Be careful using this option if your subject is moving, as longer shutter speeds may cause blur for moving subjects, as we saw earlier. Two, use wider apertures to gather more light with a larger opening in your lens. Note that this will make a thinner depth of field as we saw earlier. Only use this if a thin depth of field is okay. And three, add more light using a flash, a reflector, or LED panel, or move your subject closer to a light source like a window. All of these will add more light onto your sensor and will make you lower your ISO. Your images should come out cleaner and the sharpness and details should improve. One way to get the maximum sharpness and detail in your photo is shooting your lens at the best aperture, its sweet spot. That's because lenses are rarely of equal sharpness at varying apertures. Most have an ideal aperture where it's at its sharpest. It usually goes like this. The lens is less sharp at its widest aperture. It usually improves as the aperture gets smaller. Then at a certain point, it starts getting less sharp again due to an optical aberration called diffraction. Where the sweet spot is will depend on the lens. For many lenses, one or two stops from wide open is a good guess. So an f2.8 lens may be sharpest at between f4 and f5.6. An f5.6 lens may be sharper at f8 or f9. One exception are these really expensive super telephoto lens like my 600mm f4, which is at its maximum sharpness wide open. 
one of the reasons they're so expensive. But the opposite is often true. The more entry level your lens is, like maybe the kit lens that came with your camera, the more it will benefit from this technique, which we call stopping down your lens. To find the maximum sharpness of your own lenses, you can test this at home. Place some fine print on a wall in a well-lit area. Place your camera on a tripod and use the two second timer or shutter release to minimize any movement. Focus on the target and take photos, starting at the lens's wide open aperture and then progressively making the aperture smaller and smaller as you take photos and compare the sharpness at varying apertures. Here's my 100 to 400 millimeter lens at f5.6, f6.3, f7.1, f8, and f9. While the lens does get sharper at f8 and f9, at that point my ISO needs to go up or my shutter speed needs to go down quite a bit and the returns and sharpness come at a cost because I usually shoot this lens handheld. So for me, f7.1 gets a good enough improvement in sharpness without sacrificing anything else. So that's what I use. When I use this lens for landscapes on a tripod, I use f8 or f9 for maximum benefit. If you'd like to learn more about how to improve image sharpness, including what shooting from a warm vehicle into cold air does for your images, check out my video on that topic right here. If you thought this video deserving, please give it a like, and I hope you can go out your very next outing and get your own unique, amazing, and sharp photos. I know you can do it.